So today we're going to solve linear equations that include fractions. So you'll have something similar to this for question five. One fourth y minus five is equal to one sixth y. Now, whenever you have a whole number or an integer, you can always go through and put that over one. That's our fraction. Now, the steps that we're gonna be using with this is first, find the lowest common multiple. Second, we are going to then multiply every term by the lowest common uh, multiple. Now, the lowest common multiple I take by looking at my first denominator, which in this case is four. So four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12. And I'm gonna stop there because I'm fairly confident that 12 is gonna be our lowest common multiple. I now look at six and I do the same thing with six, only six times one is six, six times two is 12. And yep, that's what I thought, our lowest common multiple is 12. So this is what we do with that 12. I take my original piece and then I take 12, and you can write that as either 12 or 12 over one, and multiply it times every single term. So that's gonna be 12 times 1 fourth y minus five times 12 is equal to 1 sixth y times 12. And again, you can put that 12 over one at any time you want to. That's step one. And again, shorthand note, you could just go ahead and take that 12 and multiply it like this. Same idea. All right. Um, now, what we're doing with all of this, I just wanted to write it uh, so I can reduce easily. We're going to reduce. And that third step is now reduce and clear fractions. So I know that four goes into 12 three times. There's nothing to reduce over here. And six goes into 12 twice. So let's see what we're left with. Three y for the first term minus five times 12 is 60 and over here I just have a y times 2 so that is 2y. I'm going to go ahead and uh, subtract 3y from both sides and then I would be left with negative 60 is equal to negative y and your final answer is not negative 60. This is really important. Whenever there's a negative in front of here, in front of the variable, divide both sides by that negative one, and your final answer is a positive y. Always have must be a positive for your answer with this. We'll look at one more question with fractions. Your question six will look something similar to five fourths x plus one eighth is equal to seven over 12. And again, my first step is going to be to find the lowest common multiple. I do that by starting with and look at each fraction. This is my uh, first fraction, so that's four. So the multiples of four, four times one, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, four times four is 16, four times five is 20. 4 times 6 is 24. And I'm going to stop there. I'm fairly sure that my least common multiple is 24. How do I know that? Well, if I look at my next denominator, which is 8, I'll do the same thing. But for 8, 8 times 8 is, 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and 8 times 3 is 24. And for the last one, if I look at 12, my last fraction, well, 12 times 1 is 12, 
12 times 2 is 24. So 24 is definitely my lowest common uh, multiple. Now, I take my lowest common multiple and multiply every single term in this, both sides of the equation. You can even think about it as having a 24 on the outside and then having to distribute both of those. So when I distribute the 24, I have 24 times 5 over 4x plus 24 times 1 eighth is equal to 24 times 7 over 12. Now I reduce. And again, remember the coolest thing here is that we can get rid of all the fractions in this step. I know that 24 divided by 4, and remember this is the same thing as this is saying 24 over 1. 4 divides into 4 one time, and 4 divides into 24 six times. That leaves us with 6 times 5 times x, or 30x. Over here for the next step, I'm saying 8 divides into 8 one time, and 8 divides into 24 three times, so that all I'm left with here is a 3. And on the last side of the equation, it's 24, again 24 over 1, if you prefer, and 12 divides into 12 one time, and 12 divides into 24 two times, so all of this is equal to 2 times 7. Don't forget to multiply those together to get 14. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I'm left with 30x is equal to 11. And finally, I divide. So my final answer here is x is equal to 11 over 30.